Hi, howdy, hello, my name is Sabina. Well, it's so nice to see you again. If you're uh, new here, it's nice to meet you. Um, I am an artist, I make jewelry, and I paint, and I draw, and I do ceramics, and I just don't wanna pick one, so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna do them all. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how I make a knotted bead necklace, and I'm gonna show you how you can use it as a tool to cultivate a gratitude practice or use them for like daily affirmations or prayers or whatever. Maybe you just want to wear it because it's cute. Um, I made this one for myself earlier this year. I went to the Tucson Gem Show like I do and I found some garnets and I thought wow those are pretty and I taught myself how to do like bead knotting, pearl knotting, mala necklace making basically, and I strung together 111 beads and I've been using them just about every day for a daily gratitude practice. Um, and it's been powerful, you know? I have been on this self-healing journey from uh, trauma, abuse, you know. <laughs> As a little girl, I experienced a lot of not really good things and you know, Sometimes you gotta heal from it. And as a mystic who is interested in consciousness and consciousness expanding and, you know, manifesting, you know, that's a buzzword on the internet these days. Manifesting, manifest your life. Um, I'm playing with it, you know? It, it can be something that is useful. It's not just a cringe spiritual healer lingo you know you're constantly manifesting your reality your thoughts are constantly creating the world around you and it's not even just your thoughts it's your feelings too a lot of manifesting has to do with feeling into what you want so as somebody who has had to heal out of survival mode um feeling grateful and feeling like good is not something that has always come naturally to me it is something that has come to me through repetition and I use these beads to do that each bead is one thing that I'm grateful for 111 times one to two times a day that's a lot that's a lot of things to be grateful for and it just tunes your brain and your consciousness and your energy to look for things to be grateful for you can also use these beads for affirmations if you need to tell yourself something affirming over and over again, mantras, prayers, whatever it is. I was inspired to make this honestly because of Catholic Rosary, but your girl can't do institutional religions, so I kind of did my own spin on it. I know mala necklaces are common for like yoga and yogis, and that is something that I don't fully understand, so I'm not even going to talk about it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you how to make one. Gratitude, so powerful. If you don't want to hear me talk about gratitude, you can just skip right ahead. I'll put a little timestamp down below and you can just skip right to the tutorial. I've already tried to film this intro like four times and the first couple times, way too long. Took myself way too seriously. Pain in the ass to edit. There's an agricultural building being built right there. <laughs> and I thought I'd be able to just talk over a generator and talk over a saw. So I'm gonna have to do a voiceover for the tutorial because I already made all the necklaces with all the beads that I have and I'm not gonna go get more beads. So I'm just gonna talk over in a voiceover. Um, this is an opportunity for you to make one for yourself. With each knot and each bead, you can put your own intention into it and it's really powerful if you make it for yourself. But I also have seven necklaces available and by the time this video is posted, they will be on my website. So if you want something made with the magic that I have helped to create, that's great. You know, you can find them in the link in the bio. Um, if you make one for yourself, tag me, tag me on Insta. Yeah, so I think that gratitude is a really good introduction practice to manifesting because you do have to be grateful for the things that you have already and the things that you're trying to create to pull them in. If you have the feeling in your body, like if you're in your mind, if you're trying to manifest things, outcomes, realities for yourself, uh, if you don't feel it deep in your belly and your, in your body that that thing is already true for you, it's not going to come in really at all. You have to be able to feel it to pull it in. And gratitude 
is a really simple way to cultivate that feel good feeling of feeling like you have a lot and practicing abundance. I think abundance is not a mindset that the Western world is very comfortable or familiar with. We are very much focused on this idea that there is not enough, there are haves and there are haves nots, life is hard and then you die and that's it and it really doesn't have to be that way. You know, that is lack that fuels that. Um, spirit is generous. The universe wants to give you all that you truly desire and that desire lives as a feeling in your body and there are certain institutional thoughts and practices, you know, Big T Church. I'm talking Big T like the cross. Not Jesus has nothing to do with this, but the church has taught you that your desires are evil and that your body is evil and betrays you. And I'm here to tell you that that's not true. I give you permission to trust your intuition and trust your body and trust that your desires are divinely given to you. Um, yeah, there's nuance. But yeah, we're going to make a necklace and uh you can use it for many things gratitude you can also have a gratitude practice by writing in a journal write down things that you're grateful for speak them out loud this is something that i use when i first wake up when i'm going into a meditation practice when i'm trying to fall asleep saying 111 things that i'm grateful for right before i fall asleep has changed my life and i want to share that with you because it's so simple something that anybody can do and it's a tool that you can either buy off the internet from people like me or other people on the internet Etsy probably has some stuff uh, too or you can make one for yourself and I think that's the most powerful thing that you can do but alas not everybody wants to be a crafty girl girly or boy you know we're inclusive here we try to be and uh, yeah so let's get into it all right let's get into it so we're going to start with what you need. You're going to need little trays to hold your beads. This is what I have. I, it doesn't have to be like a fancy legitimate beading tray thing. You can use like little yogurt containers or dishes, whatever you got. You're going to need some nylon cord. I got this at my local beading store, but you can find it online. They have a million colors and a million sizes. I recommend getting the thinnest one that you can because you want something that's going to fit the whole size of your bead and you're going to double your cord. So you want it to be thick enough that it fits inside the bead nicely but doesn't you don't have to like really yank on it because if you have to yank on and put a lot of pressure on the inside of that bead if your bead hole is really small uh, it can break your bead so you don't want that to happen uh, and you're gonna need a pendant if you would like to end your uh, beaded cord off with a pendant uh, you can find them, you can buy them from me if you would like, or you can find them at Michael's or find, you know, just a pendant, you know, y you guys know what a pendant is. Uh, you're also going to need a beading needle. It's basically a thin piece of wire that's been kind of twisted and folded in half that you string onto your nylon cord so that you can string your beads onto the cord without getting frustrated because your cord is fraying. It's just going to make your life easier. I promise it is worth it. You can reuse them too. Um, for all of your projects you know if you want to make a whole bunch of these to give to your friends you can reuse them it's totally worth it so to get started in the actual making process choose your cord whichever goes with your beads i choose this beautiful orange cord and you're going to cut it at about three arms lengths i'm about five foot six so it's about five feet six times three and Excuse me, I find that that is enough to do all of the knotting and have about 10 inches on each side of your beaded work to tie your pendant onto and have enough to just make sure, you know, you know, it's just like a little wiggle room. You're only cutting a couple inches off and I highly recommend if you think you're not going to have enough, cut more. You know, if you have to waste a little bit, I recommend doing that than having to completely start over. Cutting out these knots is not fun. So, yeah. Loop your beading needle on first. And like I said before, you're going to basically tie that three times, five foot six, or however tall and wide your arms are. 
in half so put your beading needle on there and i leave about 10 inches of extra tail basically and i tie a knot so yeah and then you'll pour your beads out whatever i use 111 beads uh it is about 88 of the core like main colors and then about 23 of the intermediary colors so i do sets of five so it'll be like one black bead and four orange beads 22.2 times which is basically 110 beads and then the point two is just one extra bead to make 111 where i'm starting the next set of five but i'm only doing the one black bead so it's like one black bead four orange beads one black bead four orange beads 22 times and then one extra to make it 111 I hope that makes sense. It makes sense to me. You don't have to do it in sets of five. That's just what I choose because it's like numbers that I really like. I really, really resonate with the number five. I feel like five is a number that signifies change and transformation. And that kind of goes with this whole like transforming your mindset and transforming your thoughts and just creating something for yourself. You know, you have to kind of change your, your brain a little bit here. So do what feels right for you you don't even have to use 111 beads i find that it makes a nice length to be able to go over your head but you know if you wanted to do a little keychain that also works you know 10 20 beads something that you just keep in your pocket that's great so you're going to pull that needle so that it's directly in half and then you're going to want to string all of your beads onto the cord at once I'm just going to show you five because it does take a while. It takes me about an hour to an hour and a half to create all 111 knots. And that is just going to be a video you don't want to watch. So I'm just going to show you five. You'll get the gist of it. Highly recommend stringing all of the beads that you want to use on at first. And then a way to prevent them from falling off is to cut your needle off and just tie a little knot. Um, just to keep them all on at once, you know, if you have to put the project down and come back, then you know your beads aren't going to fall off. I had that happen to me and, and believe me, it's not fun. You have to go and find your beads and you're like, dang it, you know, saving you a little stress. So pull that first bead all the way down to the knot that you created at the very beginning and you're going to, uh, I don't actually know the name of this knot. And I promise if you went and you look up a mala making tutorial, they're going to show you the same thing and they might even explain it better than me. Um, but I'm making this video anyway because I need to make it for me and you, but like mostly me. So you'll, you'll tie a knot like over under kind of situation and use your hands to guide that knot to the very base of your bead you can use a needle or an awl like a like a little piece of metal or plastic or something to guide that knot to the end of the bead but i find that that really hurts my hands so if you guide the knot to the end of your bead with your hand you can take each strand of that cord and pull it like you can see me doing and that's going to pull that bead really, or that, sorry, that's going to pull that knot really tight up against your bead, which is what you want. You want there to not be very much wiggle room between the bead and the knots. Enough room that the bead can spin and it's not going to create a lot of pressure and maybe break your bead because sometimes gemstones break, you know, everything breaks eventually, right? Uh, but the more pressure you put on something, the more likelihood that it could break. And that's a pain when you have everything, you know, string strung on there and then a bead breaks and you have to like start all over. So we want to prevent that. So yeah, you can see, just pull it kind of hard and you'll be able to feel as you do this, how to do it the best. And you'll get better as you go to believe me, the first necklace that I made is loose as heck. And the more that I did it, the better they got, um, so it comes with practice and you can say little affirmations for each knot that you do. I think that that's really powerful. Like the knot kind of binds those affirmations and that energy that you're putting into it to the piece itself. I am a big believer that the things that you interact with, with you in your life carry energy and they can absorb your energy. And the more that you interact with them, the more energy they can absorb. So it's kind of like as you practice with these beads more and more in your meditation and gratitude practice, the stronger that they get. And then you can wear them on your body and and it's just, you know, it's just magic. You know, everything we do is magic. Every intention that you set 
whether you know it or not, is practical magic. And it's nothing to be scared of, you know? You can pray to whoever you want to, and it's still magic, and I love that. So you just do it for as many beads as you'd like. You're always going to pull the knotted beads through the through the knot. Um, you're not going to want to pull the beads that are waiting to be knotted through. I don't know why. I just feel like it works better. Um, and you'll get the hang of it as you do it more, I promise. It's really fun. It's really meditative. You can do it while you're watching TV. You can make it like a whole meditation practice in and of itself. It's really fun. So I those are the first five. And I'm going to come back um, and show you all of the ones that I made. As far as putting the pendant on at the end, I'm so sorry. The footage got kind of corrupted and I don't have it anymore. Um, I guess I can maybe film some. I don't know. I'm not going to do that. I basically just take the end of the cord and tie a little knot and then because it's nylon you can tie a few knots to make it really secure on there and then use a like a match or I use like a little lighter to singe the end to hold it on there I hope that makes sense I'm so sorry I can't show you but I will try and talk you through it so here is the final product of the one that I started I'm gonna show you all of them actually that I finished for this collection you can see that it's like a square knot kind of situation I don't know if that's what it's called it's that macrame knot you know that the people be making for their plant hangers and stuff I used to make them or I used to make uh, like little hemp necklaces and bracelets out of that same kind of knot but you can really do whatever you would like to finish it off the nylon is really nice because it's really strong so you're not gonna have to deal with it breaking but also you can use a lighter at the end to singe that end down and kind of push it onto itself and seal it in there so it'll be really strong you can also use silk if you'd like but silk is known to break and you're gonna have to rebeat it like soon silk it's just so delicate uh, it's not a natural fiber nylon but it is strong and durable so yeah that's the full collection that's how you make it if you like any of these necklaces that i'm showing at the end they're all available on my website as we speak you can just go on there and purchase them uh, i'll have full descriptions of all the beads that i use and the lengths of everything the ones with the smaller beads are a little shorter than the ones with the longer beads but you know it all works out and some of them have ceramic pendants and some of them have metal pendants and uh this next clip that is about to come up is the full collection all together you can see which one you like i like them all i actually like the green and white one the best but honestly i think they're all cute and they all have different beads that are just so lovely so yeah thank you for watching i hope that that wasn't too chaotic Alright y'all, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope it made sense. And if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe. I'm going to be making more tutorials about just all kinds of stuff. You know, like I said in the intro, I am just interested in different things. You know, I'll make silversmithing videos for sure, but I'll also draw and paint and talk about stuff. And I will also be sharing my ceramics journey. And I'm attempting to film this while somebody's grinding, but it's about to rain and I don't want to come back out here and set my camera back up. So I'm going to keep it short. If you like this, you know, like I said already, if you're interested in purchasing a necklace that I made, you can find them on in the link down below. Um, follow my Instagram if you want. I'm pretty much only posting stories there anymore because Instagram can suck my pee pee and um yeah let me know how it goes if you try and make one tag me in it on insta or something whatever i think it's cool you know if you want to buy one that's great too uh whatever you know whatever you feel called for um peace and love